every family has its own dynamics that is defined by a set of unique individuals and how they interact with one another. Conflict among family members can and does exist. It's no surprise that similar family dynamics are also present in residential care communities. After all, these communities are a person's home. Edith Gendron with the Alzheimer's and Dementia Resource Center has joined me to explain how difficult behaviors are managed in residential care communities. Thank you for being here, Edith. Oh, you're welcome. And let's just be upfront. Are there conflicts that occur in residential care centers? Every single day. <laughs> yes, there are. We have a, a study that was done looking at that very topic, and of 100% of the respondents, 100% said that it occurred. So this is something, and I think sometimes as a visitor in a nursing home or assisted living, maybe we are surprised to see this, but it is something that uh, is it, a fact of life. Right, right. Well, now, what are some of the common reasons for these outbursts or disturbances? Well, we're coming into a congregate setting. And the first most common reason is with new folks that are moving in, they've not lived in a residential setting. They've not lived in a congregate setting. You have an extremely diverse population between staff members and the people that are moving in or living there. A lot of different backgrounds, different ethnic beliefs, and those sorts of things. And you also have different types of people. Some people you know, do well in groups. Mm -hmm. Other people are very s solitary. They don't want to be in a group. Um, expectations can be other than what the reality is when you are looking at just coming into a community. Now, are these conflicts likely to be verbal or can they be physical? Um, they are most often verbal. Um, verbal from shouting or yelling or calling names using unfortunately you know racial epithets those sorts of things they can on occasion it is is much much more rare though um, become physical what are some of the techniques that the staff might use to diffuse a situation the first thing that must be done must be done is for the family and the new resident to have a discussion with the intake staff it's called a reasonable expectations discussion so they have an honest understanding of what's going to be expected of them um, then staff members should be well trained in paying attention to the individual what does that person like um, if per someone has always been solitary don't drag them out and expect them to play bingo. They're not going to. You're going to have a conflict there. You know, you have resident to resident, but you also have resident to staff. Um, to, to expect someone to do something that they've never done before or enjoyed before just because they're in a residential setting is going to cause a conflict. Mm -hmm. And then we won't spend a lot of time on this part, but families sometimes interpret the resident's desires or wishes as a conflict situation. Specifically, should the resident decide that they are attracted to someone else? Mm. Um, families can cause that to be a conflict when it should, when we're talking about competent residents able to give consent. It should just be allowed to progress as, as the people choose. We're out of time, Edith, but how can someone reach you for more information? Um, at the Alzheimer's and Dementia Resource Center, my phone number is 407-843-1910. Thank you very much for being with us today. You're welcome. I certainly do appreciate Edith coming in to talk about managing difficult behaviors in residential settings.